All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. May the Most High bless you. I pray all is well with everybody. I want to welcome you back to another Real Talk video. Um, in this video, I want to talk to the musicians for a minute. My title says, Musicians Who Don't Practice. Now, I know this is a very hot topic, and I'm speaking from a musician's point of view. And uh, what I want to talk about in this video is the difference between practicing versus rehearsing. So many musicians got it confused about practice and rehearsing. So before you get mad and cut the video off because of the title, this video is not to beat you over the head and, and, and go off on you, but to just give you some advice, some advice and tell you some truth. I don't know it all. But I do want to share with you what I've learned from being an MD pretty much, I don't know how long now. Um, and when you when you are MD, you take a lot. So I'm speaking from a musical standpoint as a musician and a music director um, because it's so much confusion when people think they are rehearsing, they really are practicing. Let me tell you this off top. You practice on your own time. And I'm going to say this also, even when you're dealing with choirs, you know, we're so quick to call it choir practice, but it should be really choir rehearsal. See, practice goes a long way. And when you don't practice, it shows. This is why we got so many transposing musicians nowadays. Technology has already handicapped so many musicians, and I mean this out of love. So as I was speaking to my brother Marvell this morning, we had a conversation about practicing versus rehearsing. And big shout out to you, my brother Marvell on the horn, you know, coming from a horn player standpoint. You know, me and him play together all the time um, at church, outside of church. And we was having a deep conversation. I said, you know what, brother Marvell, we need to share this with the YouTube family. So to all the musicians all around the world, singers, let me even go far as saying this. Preachers who don't practice. Mm. Singles who don't practice. Musicians who don't practice. We always walking around talking about practice makes perfect. But for me, it don't make perfect. Practice makes me better. Because I can get on the piano and, and practice every day, every night, all during the day. And I'm still not perfect with it. But I can perfect what I do. But to say I'm perfect, can't say that. To say I'm a perfect man, I can't say that. So I want to say that off top. But knowing the difference between practicing and rehearsing or what a lot of people like to call shedding. Most people go on to they shed now. You know, where the, the dramas that shed together. See, we got to really learn what we doing and how we doing it. And when you think you are really rehearsing, when you're really practicing, you backwards. See, too many musicians make the mistake of going to rehearsal not prepared. How are you going to rehearse over what you haven't even practiced, if that makes sense? See, let's break down practice. When you look at practice, practice is the act of rehearsing. Something we, you can even say a behavior over and over, or whatever you're practicing on in your life, you do it over and over again. But the majority of the time, when you practice, all the time when you practice, once again, I'm not gonna say the majority, you're practicing on your own. For me, all my practice starts in this room before I go to any rehearsal during the week. My practice starts right here before I go to church. My practice is right here. Before I present the choir with the songs as the minister of music, my practice starts in here. So my practice leads into rehearsing. It leads into rehearsing. You engaging in the activity again and again. That's what practice is, rehearsing over and over again. But how many people do not practice, but they want to be a part of this? They want to play on that. They want to sing on that. They want to preach on that. Practice is why you, when you practice, you improve. You get better. 
You try to master whatever it is you playing or singing, whatever it is that you do, you're trying to master it. So you have to practice, practice, practice your instrument. And let me tell you something. It takes a lot of practicing to be on that top level like you want to be. That's when you really learn when you are practicing. Practicing, I mean, excuse me. Too many musicians want to show, they, they want you to show them everything. But when you practice, you already getting ready for rehearsing. Too many musicians make the mistake of, hey man, just show me how to hit it. Never want to learn, don't, don't never want to learn theory. Don't never want to take time out to practice and practice and practice on what we like to call the boring stuff. Well, let me tell you something. Like I told my brother Marvell, it's the boring stuff that you need to go through. I know it seems boring when you're going through certain things on the piano, whatever instrument you play. But when you learn what, what you're doing versus just trying to hit it. And when somebody come up to you and say, well, brother, what kind of card is that? I don't, I don't know. Brother, I don't even know my keys. It's a big difference when you know what you're doing. Because when you know what you're doing, you automatically know where to go. If you ever notice something, it takes more time to practice and less time to rehearse. Somebody catch that later on. It takes more time to practice. Rehearsing is not the time for practicing. Just like in the studio, you do not go to the to the studio. Let me talk to some of my studio musicians and, and studio people. Y'all, y'all know how it is in the studio. You don't go into the studio to rehearse. You go into the studio to lay it down. You practice what you're gonna do in the studio before you get to the studio. Too many people make the mistake of going to the studio to practice. And you know what the engineer is going to do? Kill you on the clock. I have seen people fall out and almost get shot and killed behind studio time. Because it's not the engineer's fault that you went into the studio unprepared. You go in there to lay it down. If you're going to just lay the hook, make sure you're going to lay the hook. And, and, and know what you was going to do while, before you get in there. You should have practiced long before you got in the studio. Too many musicians got practicing and rehearsing mixed up. They're confused. Now let me say this about rehearsing and practice. They got a relationship together. Rehearsing and, and practicing goes hand in hand with each other. You can't just have one of them. Most people I know don't never practice. But they want to play once again. They want to play on everything. They want to get to the top, but they don't want to put the time in. They don't want to put the practice in, but they want to be in charge. They want to be big. They want to do this. How are you going to perfect your instrument if you never practice your instrument? When you have that quiet time to yourself, take advantage of it and learn. Fellas, I did an old video call. If, if your woman, why would you date an insecure woman if you are a musician? It's hard to be with a musician. When it, when it comes to you taking that time to practice most of the time, most of the girls don't, the women don't understand it unless you got a truly good understanding woman. But they really don't understand half of the time when you just trying to do your little dating or whatever. They don't understand why you at Guitar Center all day. They don't understand why you're spending so much time on your instrument. But a true woman of the most time will. That's why you got to be careful who you hook up with. They say they in for it for the long run, but as soon as things get hard, they in it for the short run. You have to take that quiet time. You have to cut the phone off. You got to stop answering the door. You got, it's almost like you got to be mean, but you're really not being mean. You got to set that, that time aside to rehearse. I know your kids probably knocking on the door, daddy opening up, or mama opening up. I, I want this, I want that, but you got to find some kind of way to practice. Your practice leads into rehearsing. Just like a pastor needs to study the word on their own, they got to they gotta get that time to themselves where they can co concentrate and listen at the Holy Spirit. It's hard to hear that with a bunch of record around. And I'm going to say something else off the wall. Rehearsing, rehearsal is not the final outcome of your practice. 
Now somebody looking at this video that's a musician, tell me why I said that. Now check this out. Since we talked about practice, let's look at what rehearsing really is. Rehearsing is the act of practicing and preparation for a public performance. Look it up. That's why you have to practice before you rehearse. Big difference. Because once, once again, your practicing is preparing you for what? Your rehearsal. When you practice and know what you're doing, how you going to do it, you got confidence in yourself. You know, I find out from teaching a lot of musicians, they don't have confidence in themselves. Why? Because they're too lazy to practice. I made a lot of musicians mad with that transposing video I done called Stop Transposing and Learn Your Keys. Because you're cheating yourself. You're cheating yourself and you're never going to learn your instrument by pushing the arrow. Stop pushing the arrow. Take that arrow button up. Take the transpose button off the keyboard and transpose up here. Knowing that if I'm in C and I'm going to go up a half step, then I'm gonna go to C sharp. Or I'm gonna go to D. I'm gonna go to D flat. Or if I'm gonna jump over a whole key, let me go to D natural. We need to learn up here. When you got it up here, you're gonna automatically know where to go. Right here. Practice, 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 practice. Let me ask you this: Is your walk with the Most High a practice or is it a rehearsal? Most people now, they want to perform without even practicing, without even rehearsing. That's why their performance is terrible. A singer has to practice singing. It's like I told my brother Marvell, a saxophone player has to practice on their horn all the time. I don't care what instrument you play, it has to be practiced. That's why one day I'm going to record our rehearsals over here. This is why I speak my mind in rehearsal. Y'all ought to see, Marvell, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all ought to see what go on with us sometime as a band. Because you might think we're not even brothers. The way we come at each other. Because as I tell each one of them in their face, if they were sitting there right now, they'll tell you, Ro don't play, JT don't play. I tell them, man, when you come in this room, I expect you to know what you're doing. I'm not expecting, I'm, I don't, I'm not waiting on you to come in here and ask me what the song is when I done sent it to you. I'm not coming in here to, to practice. I'm coming in here to rehearse. Every musician in this band know, should know what they doing before they get here. That's the point of being in order. You send out things ahead of time. You contact each other during the week. So when you hook up, your rehearsal is not a practice. Your rehearsal is a rehearsal. Each band member, the bass player, the horn player, I'm on the keys, the drummer, everybody know, bass player from on down, know what they supposed to do when they get in here. You know what we supposed to do and should do as musicians come into the room to rehearse. Put your intros together. Put your fill-ins, your outros, your breakdowns. You learn each other part in rehearsal. See, let me say that again. You learn each other's part in rehearsal. Why? Because practice is individually. See, I, I can't, I can't tell tell you how it's gonna go if I don't know how it's gonna go as the MD. When you're looking toward the MD and the MD don't know what to do. You got a confused band. I'm gonna say this again to the bands, to the to to the, the church musicians. Stop calling yo yo rehearsal. Let me say this right. Stop calling your practice a rehearsal because that's not rehearsing. Your practice is on your own time. That's why I say band rehearsal. Choir rehearsal. Do your band have practice or rehearsal? Answer that for yourself. 
Because if you're not having a rehearsal and you having band practice, you might want to check what you're doing. And you don't have to agree with me on that. Because most people won't. Because they're going to call it practice anyway. When I learn songs, I hope this can help somebody. When I learn songs with my band before I present them, I learn them on my own time. I learn my material without the band. See, once again, I don't go to rehearsal to learn the music. We go to rehearsal to put the parts together. And then, and he, let me tell you something else that do. I cut out a whole lot of time and confusion. Because like I tell any minister of music, if you go into your choir rehearsal to practice, if the choir don't know what they sing and you don't know the harmony, the band members don't know what they're doing, you got a long, dry practice that's not a choir rehearsal. And you know what's going to happen? Somebody's going to get frustrated and be ready to go. And when people get mad, they're not going to give it all they got. See, if the choir members would do what they're supposed to do also, that takes a load off the minister of music. If everybody, like you say, Brother Marvell, would do their part, it works a whole lot smoother. It will be a rehearsal and not a practice. Practice on your own time. Learn the songs on your own time. It goes a whole lot smoother. Trust me, if anybody real that's a musician, if you're looking at the video, you're going to agree with me on that. It cuts out a lot of time, especially. But when musicians coming in and don't know their part, yo, look how long it's going to take. It's going to take a long time, y'all. What kind of minister of music would I be if I go to the church and never know what I'm going to play? They never know what they're going to sing. So when I get in there, I'm just sitting around looking crazy like, no, nah, I can't be like that. Always be prepared. Always be ready. You know what, y'all? When musicians go home and practice, let me say it like this. When you put it on them to go home and practice, that's a responsibility. You require musicians to practice on their own. That puts the responsibility to practice and learn back on those musicians. But see, when there is no order, all this I'm talking about, it ain't gonna happen. When you learn a song on your own, that's creating opportunities to develop a ear for music also. A lot of y'all on here on YouTube, JT, how can I work on my ear? See, it's amazing how y'all, a lot of y'all who know who y'all are, I'm not, not trying to put you down, but I'm going to tell you where you fought at. A lot of y'all always ask me about ear training and how can I improve, but the same ones, a lot of y'all that ask me is, you will not practice. How do you expect to get better if you do not practice? I didn't say rehearse, because if you can't get through practice, you sure not going to get through rehearsing. You have to, I can't stress that enough in this video, you have to practice. That's it. Case closed. You know, the most time really blessed me with a with an earl. And when I started out, I didn't start out being a piano player. I was a drummer. I never knew that I was going to wind up being a, a, a piano player. I really didn't. Because I was so stuck on the drums. I learned how to read drum music when I was in elementary. I went through elementary on the snare drum, bass drum, the drums. Then went through middle school. Got out, I think, 10th grade in high school. But I used to make my band teacher, Mr. Leron Wilson. I used to make Leron pretty mad sometimes. Because I was real good. I could read the music but I also could memorize it and when it time went time to go to competitions I never even looked at the paper because I went over so much practicing I could I could read it on paper also but I knew where every quarter note every rest 
everything was at a pearl and in my eyesight. And he would come test me just to see if I could read it back to him, I would play, call it out to him. One and a two, he got a three and a four, he got a rest, two, three, four, tap, 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 tap. That was me all day, every day. But what I wasn't realizing at first is how good my ear was. And when I saw my daddy play, I want to say Mr. Magic, on the keyboard, that set it off for me. Next thing I know, I still play the drums, me and Chisel Market. <laughs> I still play the drums every now and again. But the keyboard, the piano, y'all already know, I love it. My point is, practicing and practicing and practicing. From when I learned Mr. Magic by Grover Washington Jr., that, it went from Grover Washington to, to Marvin Gaye to, to all the old school that you could think of. That's why old school, I love old school, because if you really want to learn how to play, get off in some Earth, Wind, and Fire. Get off in some of them songs with them ballads where, see, R&B now ain't number two cards. I'm talking about songs back then that had changes that I love to play now. You, it's hard to figure this out because ain't nobody showing you. That's how I learned how to play, practicing. You tell me I couldn't learn it, I come back the next day saying, here it is. What else you got for me? My old man would challenge me. Y'all bet you, you can't learn this Billy Paul, me and Mrs. Jones. You ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get this What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. Yeah, I made everybody out of lie. The ones that said I would never play the piano because I practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Let me say this to the experienced bands. The ones that's experienced and have went on that advanced level, y'all the ones that show up and you prepare it and you already know your music. So your rehearsal is gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. Because you are the more experienced ones who have practiced over and over again and still practicing. But it's to the ones that don't practice that's going to that's gonna continue to stay on that beginning level. And they still don't know the difference between practicing and rehearsing. They just hyped and happy to be a part of a band. But when you learn, it's more than just playing. See, the rehearsal is, is the place to do things together once again. You know what I learned about rehearsal? That's the place to get things right. Let me say this right. You get it right and practice on your own. But rehearsal is where you do things together. Because when you think about it, you're doing the things together that you can't do when you're by yourself. You can learn your part on your own, but when you come together, how you gonna learn? How you gonna be all of that in the band? You can't. See, I can't play the drums, the keys, and the bass by myself. Now I can go over there in the motif and put a track on and play all of them instruments at one time, but that's technology. That's the keyboard. I'm talking about live. So I need to rehearse with Marvell. I need to rehearse with Rob. I need to rehearse with Jeremy. I have to come together with them so we can put it together. But remind you, I done already practiced on my own. I got to learn everybody else part, see what they doing. See, I had to learn the hard way coming up. Wasn't a whole lot of people teaching us. They would cover up their car. They were stingy. Well, now, nah, brother, you got to learn like I learned. I ain't going to show you nothing. That's how they done us. I wish when I was growing up that I, I would have had YouTube. I would have had brothers like Jamal Hartwell or, or PJ Morgan or sisters like Cassandra O'Neill and so many people out here teaching Jermaine Griggs and Sam Toad with all y'all dynamic musicians. I wish I would have had that growing up. I would be way further along the line than where I'm at now. That's why I practice like I practice. 
Don't think because I'm spending all this time doing these real talk videos and Bible study videos that I'm not on my piano. I'm just not on my piano on camera. I have what you call in life balance. I spend so much time studying the word and posting videos on her. Then there's a time where I cut the camera off and I might stay on the piano. Just like yesterday, snowing too. I stayed on there probably 12 hours. And when I say 12 hours, I look at that 12 hours like it's 15 minutes. Y'all catch what I'm saying? The Most High is my teacher. That's my teacher. And the Most High show favor on me that I can't even explain. Because let me tell you something, I haven't went to nobody's school. I never went to school for music at all. I never went to school for teaching the word. And I'm not saying that for no hand clap, nor to brag. I'm showing you that what the most I have for you is for you, but you got to work at it. You got to practice. He will give, he gave, he gave it to us already. We got to activate it. Problem with most of us is, once again, we do not want to practice. You know what I tell some musicians as I close? It's just like they're the same way with the word. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. They won't even pick the Bible up and study it, but they want to be a minister of music. They want to be a minister of music, but they don't want to learn nothing but A flat and E flat and D flat. And transpose the rest. I'm not talking about everybody, but I know cats that's transposing. They playing by three keys and they make $700, $800 a Sunday. I'm not hating on them. I'm just saying something wrong with that picture. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful blessed day. Peace out.